So hi and welcome back to Roy's desk. I know it's been long since I uploaded the last video. I again got tied up with some work. I think the last video was about some month back. Well, here I am back again with a new video. Well, in this video, we are going to look into the notch filter in here, which I have put inside a aluminium box now. And the most important stuff, we are going to measure the distortion of this LM3886 IC. We are going to prove that our system, the DIY THD measurement setup, actually is precise and works just like a charm. And we can use it for our further future projects. So, without wasting any further more time, let's get started. So, before going any further into the video, if you are new to my channel, then definitely you need to subscribe to my channel and also press the bell icon, you will get notified whenever I upload a new video. But what is more important than that is, you need to watch this series right in here, this playlist, or else you won't be getting what is this that I'll be using in the video, or what is this or this or also this which i have also placed inside this aluminium box now since the time was very limited i could not record the process of making this aluminium box right in here well if you have watched this video of the attenuator then you will know how i have designed this aluminium box for it same happens for this one also just that this one is having one face panel in here another face panel in here and one top in here and unfortunately i cannot open it and show you what's inside because i have already bolted down everything and i don't want to open it but it is having two notch filters like this same circuits two of this inside it that's out and this is in and this is out of the other one and this is in and i'm also having two 9 volt batteries same that i use for all low power applications nowadays Two 9 volt batteries with a switch on off switch and one indicator led connected in between the plus 9 and the minus 9 and the reason i'm having two of the circuits in here is because you see this is a circuit that i've used inside the circuit board and the circuit board at this side of the box is having a gain of 6 db or both the registers in here are same giving a gain of 1 since it's not inverting 1 plus 1 is 2 and that gives 6 dB of gain and I have also noted down the effect that a notch filter is having on the second harmonics and the third harmonics again if you are not getting this you need to watch the playlist videos moving on so this side is having a gain of 20.82 dB which means that gain of 11 again I have noted down the influence of the notch filter to the second and the third harmonics in here so just that I don't forget it and the reason that I have the two different gains are because I got on suggestion in the comment of the previous video that why not increase the gain of the circuit because previously I was using a gain of 3 and ideally it makes sense. In our spectrum analyzer mode what we recorded is this one where you can see that there are no visible harmonics or at least the sound card that I am using is not capable of measuring any harmonics. It's so low in value. So what I suggested to me is increase the gain of the notch filter such that at least the harmonics are a little bit more visible. Then I increase the gain to 11 or 20.8 to dB. But yes, again the same result as you can see on the screen. It did introduce a little bit of noise into the spectrum but no visible harmonics. So the second or the third one, then what I did is I connected the in and the out and I gave the input to the notch 1 and then I took the output from the notch 2 which is the 20.82 dB gain such that I have both the gains together acting into the system but it made the system worse. It introduced a lot of noise into the system because of the noise of these individual notch filters and still no visible harmonics. So I'll just put two of this just in case when I'll be using different sound cards I can test it. Now I hope I did not bore you because now we will be testing the LM3886 but unfortunately I do not have a proper supply for this one. The max I can go with this is a 12012 transformer at this moment. So let's move into that. So I will be testing this board. I have already made videos about designing the circuit board and 
lot of other videos on this LM3886 IC. The link will be there in the description. Definitely go check it out. But the main reason because of which I am testing this LM3886 board is because during making the videos, when I was using this LM3886 TIC or the Metal Tab IC, some people said that this might be one counterfeit IC because of the way uh, this namings are etched onto the surface. But I could not really make sure of it because the power output and all other protection features were all same as the original LM3886 IC. And as mentioned in the data sheet of this, there was only one thing remaining to make sure that if it's original or counterfeit is it is the THD parameter and now since we have a proper THD measuring setup I thought I'll just measure the THD value of this lm 3 6 TIC and find out if it's really an original IC or a counterfeit. Well this is the transformer that I'm going to use and this is 12.012 5 amps I believe which will be connected to the rectifier plus filter board which is sufficient enough for this test. So the setup is done in here. Uh, this is the register box. If you want to check out the video for this, the link will be up in here somewhere. So let me explain you the connection. It's pretty simple. So the power comes in here to 30 volts, then 1212 rectified, filtered, and it goes to the amplifier board in here. The input to the amplifier is coming from our audio oscillator and I've used one potentiometer to adjust the amplitude of the output of audio oscillator. Then the output of the amplifier goes to our resistor network box, which is currently switched to 8 ohms. If you have seen the video, you will remember the downwards. If you press the switch, it will be 4 ohms, upwards it's 8 ohms. And also across the output of the resistor box, we have connected the attenuator in parallel and output of the attenuator is connected to our sound card. At first we will use our attenuator box to measure the distortion then we will switch to our notch filter because if you know the notch filter is also having an attenuation of minus 40 dB or something so even if you feed 20 plus volts peak to peak it's still going to be fine to feed to our sound card. So at first attenuator because less calculation obviously and then notch filter. So I've switched it on now. Let us measure the voltage that we are getting close to 33 volts and plus minus 16.4 volts. Obviously with very less load because what we are having now is 8 volt peak to peak in the output. The blue line is the output and the yellow is the output of the audio oscillator or the input to the amplifier. So let us see how much maximum wattage we are getting in this condition. So if I just try to keep everything in the frame and change the potentiometer value in here. And there is a clipping near about 26.8 volts. That's our maximum output peak to peak that we can get. Let us see what is the drop in the voltage now. As you can see, it's not much of a drop. It's 31.6 volts now. 15.8 volts plus minus since this is a 5 amps transformer it's fine with this load so what we are going to do is we are going to feed this to our attenuator then we are going to feed it to our sound card and then we'll check the thd at the max peak to peak output so that's our view of the spectrum analyzer mode in the ATA software and you can see we are having 26.8 volts peak to peak the measurement in here shows 0.005% or it's basically 60 ppm. By this I already mean that we have an authentic lm 3886 ic but then this is not the correct information, TH information that we are getting now. So my AC voltage dropped a bit and that's why I cannot get 26.8 volts peak to peak anymore. If you see the maximum now what I'm getting is around 26 volts peak to peak. We are more or less getting the same value in the THD measurement. So the THD 
but as i said this is not the proper value because what it's measuring is with respect to our fundamental which is already below 0 db so we need to make sure that our fundamental is at 0 db so if we move our cursor to fundamental that is 1675 hertz we are getting minus 3.7 db down now let's go to our second harmonics 3350 we are getting minus 88.8 or basically 89 minus 89 and then the third harmonics which is 5025 that gives us minus 107 point it's fluctuating but I will take minus 107 dB let us do all the measurements in the end that will simplify our video let me switch this attenuator with our notch filter in here and let us take down the measurements again let me switch it on and let us go to our maximum peak to peak before clipping and that's clipping so it's better to go to 26 volts peak to peak so again if we take down the measurements b peak to peak is 26 volts peak to peak this is very important in case of notch filter i will tell later during calculations what we are getting as part of the second harmonics is 3350 we are getting minus 75 db let me put the average third harmonics which is 5025 we are getting minus 98 db now in case of notch filter the calculation is not so simple we also have to take into consideration the effect of the notch filter to the second and the third harmonics again we will do that during calculation but these are the measurements that we recorded from two different scenarios with a notch filter and with just the attenuator feeding directly to our sound card now let's go over to our calculation so these are the values that are recorded with the attenuator measurement remember we have to make this 0 db in order to measure the energy of the second and third harmonics and in, if we make this 0 db then we have to add the energy of the fundamental with this and this second and third harmonics 89 plus 3.7 92.7 minus 92.7 db and third harmonics as 110.7 db now the formula is pretty straightforward we need to calculate the THD by 10 to the power minus our energy say E divided by 20 so for the second harmonics case THD equals to 10 to the power minus 92.7 divided by 20 this gives us 10 to the power minus 4.635 which is equivalent to 0 0.00002317 we'll call this as A then comes the third and we will call this as b so the equivalent thd is root over of a square plus b square so the equivalent thd is 2.335 into 10 to the power minus 5 and thd in percentage will be 0.0023 percent which is 23 ppm so our p out was if you remember our v peak to peak was 26 volts so 26 divided by 2.828 that gives us our rms voltage that square rms square divided by our resistance that gives us 10.5 so p out is 10.56 watts rms obviously at this point thd percentage that we are getting 0.0023 percent so we use the notch one from this notch filter box and notch one is having attenuation of minus 2.12 db for the second harmonic and a gain of 1 db 1.08 db to be exact for the third harmonics don't get confused with the addition and 
subtraction symbols in here here we are reducing or subtracting the energy and here we are adding the energy and this gives us minus 72.88 db and this is minus 99.08 db now one very crucial point is that you know our v peak to peak or the signal that we are feeding to the notch filter was 26 volts peak to peak the energy that we recorded is with respect to the attenuated signal for this case when we are using the notch filter we should always add the energy of the input signal that we are feeding to the system 0 dB in R term means 1.32 volt RMS so if 0 dB means 1.32 volt RMS then what is the energy that we have for our fundamental so V peak to peak is 26 volts 26 volts peak to peak means 9.19 volt RMS so what is the db in here for 9.19 volt rms so with relative to 0 db for 9.19 volt rms our db measurement is 16.9 db so that's our fundamentals energy now you can definitely calculate this with 20 log of 9.19 with the relative 1.32 volt rms or you can directly give this measurements to chat gpt it will give you the result so for 3350 it is now 80 minus of 89.78 dB and for our third harmonics it is minus of 115.98 dB and if you calculate the THD equivalent will be 3.55 into 10 to the power minus 5 which you can also represent like this and THD in percentage will be 0 0.0035 or 35 ppm both the values are extremely low values and now we need to compare these values with our data sheet of lm 38860 and we will see which one is closer to the data sheet measurement okay so this is our data sheet for lm 38860 ic and at the page number 12 of the texas instruments lm 38860 ic data sheet you will find our chart or the graph for THD plus N versus output power and we are going to look into this particular graph in here now two points one is definitely the supply voltage that they are using is plus minus 28 volts and for us it's plus minus 16.5 volts I know this makes a difference but still we are going to look into this one this is the most relevant graph for our use case and another point is they're plotting THD plus N versus output power and THD plus N in here is equivalent kind of to our THD because the THD plus N that they are measuring is with professional equipments in the lab with everything regulated and well calculated this is one kilohertz sine wave that they have tested and we want to look close to this 10 watts range because we have 10.5 watts so in the 10 watts range what we have is 0 0.001 0 0.002 and 0 0.003 so they are measuring 0.003% of THD plus N with 8 ohms load and what we got in here is between the results that we measured with our attenuator and the notch filter setup this proves that our DIY THD measurement setup is pretty accurate and it can give you values close to the datasheet measurement values also and this also proves that the ICs that I am using are pretty authentic ICs because it gives proper THD values also. It's not about how the markings are etched onto the surface of the ICs. It's also about the physical measurement values that we receive or that we measure with our circuit board which proves that one IC is authentic or not. So it's time to end the video now. Just for a hint this is what i will do for the next project i won't name it but yes i believe by looking at this transistors you are pretty much sure of what is going to be the next project but definitely it's going to be a series of videos not just a single video showing the full circuit and then testing it no we will test step by step each block and i will explain each block by testing it so stay tuned and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also press the bell icon. You will get notified whenever I upload a new video. We will meet again soon. That's what I hope. Till then, bye-bye.